to share some of the things that I've learned about uh, Lightroom here. So I've imported some pictures. And I'm in the library, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the developer. And these are the pictures. So, so these are pictures are kind of dark, especially these. So basically, one thing you can do, one of the nice things about this program is you can uh, batch process. So if you want to go, uh, say, take a group of pictures that are very similar, this one, these are all very similar, and they're all a little bit underexposed. Click, you can go to the bottom here, click all three of these pictures and flip this little switch, what this does is enables automatically syncing of all the changes that you make to the photo, to one photo. So I'll go ahead and click that on and hit auto sync or, and you can choose exactly which settings to synchronize across all three pictures and you've got white balance, basic tone, color, split toning. So I'm going to go ahead and pick white balance and let's see exposure and flow light. All right, I guess I can do brightness and contrast too. Exposure, highlight recovery, flow light. So we're going to go ahead and automatically sync all of these across the board. So, so auto auto sync is on, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and auto sync all of these actually. So I'm going to start with this one, and it's a little dark. This is a little histogram. It tells you. Uh, the exposure and so right now this is the, the darks and it's really up against the left you can click this little triangle here click both triangles and this tells you this tri triangle tells you if you're uh, if you're um, if you're if you're losing the darks losing the blacks and there's a little bit of blacks highlighted here there's nothing on the highlights here because it's a really dark picture so in order to even things out I'm going to slide this over to the right a little bit and that'll balance the picture out a lot better. Now it's not so dark and there's not quite so many blacks that are um, clipped. So that's good. And I think that's good for now. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. So now I can go to the first card and I can do white balance. And so as you can see, all these pictures um, had their exposures increased. And I should actually check this one to make sure the highlights are. So I'm going to go ahead and do the white balance now. This is it's supposed to do a, uh, start with log logistical progression. So you start on the top here with the exposure, and then now you go to the crop overlay. So this one here, you can go to this tool and you can use this to straighten out the picture. So this one needs a little bit of straightening, and you can crop a little bit if you want, make it a little bit more dramatic Let's see here okay so that's good so just click on this one again and that'll make the picture nice and Actually, I'm going to darken this a little bit more. I'm going to go for a little bit. I'm going to go for a little bit of a dramatic look here. So, so this one here is a spot removal. There's no spots here. Well, I guess there is a spot here that I can remove. You can, and you can control the size of the spot remover. So, go ahead and click there, and it's gone. So that's the spot remover. This is red eye remover. This is graduated filter. This allows you to um, adjust a, a certain portion of the picture. You can go like this, and pick a color. Um, right now, I'm pick the I pick white, and you can change the exposure here. You can make it darker or lighter. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little darker just for a little bit of a dramatic effect. You can pull it down a little bit more. So that's nice. And this is adjustment brush. Um, 
I haven't used this one too much. I'm not really sure what it does. Uh, this is so now we can go to the white balance. And this is my white balance card. Hit the dropper here, click on it, and this will set the white balance for all the pictures. So now you can see all the pictures have the white balance adjusted and looks different. You can also cho uh, choose your white balance. There's a custom white balance. This is only available if you shoot in RAW. So you can do it as shot, or you can do daylight, which actually looks pretty good. It, it's, it's really kind of a matter of opinion, whatever you like. Cloudy, dark shade. If you shoot, if you don't shoot in RAW, you only get basically automatic and as shot, and I think one more, and a custom. You only get three choices, so. If you want to go back, this this little uh, area here allows you to, this is the history, and if you want to go back to the original um, setting that I had for the white balance, you can just go here, and it's, it's a really quick, easy way of, uh, instead of hitting the back button, you hit back, 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 you just click on it directly. And so, I actually kind of like the looks of this one. I'm not sure I like this look. This is a little orange. That shot. I kind of like that look actually. It's a little blur. So I'll go with that look. And so that's the white balance. Tone, exposure. So presence, clarity, clarity. Um, it makes it makes parts of the image stand out more. Um, the, I've, I've seen other people use this and they usually will just turn up a little bit. Vibrance makes kind of increases the saturation. This is what people use. I notice people use this when there aren't other people, when there are people in the picture. And this is kind of a way of boosting the colors. Saturation. Um, people tend to avoid using this when there's other people in there. I guess the mixed skin tones look kind of weird. But I guess I guess it's okay if you don't have any people in your picture. So I'll just change that a little bit. This is the tone curve. This allows you to uh, make the whites whiter or the blacks blacker or vice versa. So I'll go ahead and make this curve a little steeper, just to add a little bit of dramatic effect. Crush some of these blacks. Boost some of the highlights. And you can actually do this manually too, but it's, it's easier just to use the curve. Um, this allows you to boost or suppress any individual colors. Reds, yellows, blues. So if you want to boost the red a little bit, you can boost the red, boost the orange a little bit. Saturation, luminance, split toning, highlights, sharpening. So you can make it sharper, less sharp, noise reduction, lens correction. Lens correction is used if you've got like a fisheye lens or a wide angle lens, you can, um, if there happens to be a profile in a Lightroom 3, you can use this to um, change the change the effect so you can go from a wide angle like if you have a fish eye you can you can actually make the image look flat by using that uh, lens correction effects this one's pretty neat this is a uh, post crop vignetting so this allows you to add a vignette which is nice. You can adjust the size, roundness, and if you can, if you want to go back to the original setting, you can just click on the lerd and it'll go sit, reset it back to zero, which is easy. How much to feather it? So I want to feather it. Highlights. Highlights is nice because it allows you to maintain highlights within the area that's being. Uh, cropped. So yeah, it's a pretty good picture. I'm gonna but that's basically uh that's most of it. I mean as far as as far as what I understand. I'm not an expert in this program but should uh, give you an idea of uh, some of the things you can do. This